Hello, and welcome to the next in our series of Oceans Podcasts, where we're talking about some of the new tools that we have for fishing and fish finding. These podcasts look at a given product, discuss some of its history and key features, how to acquire it with WeatherNet, and how to process it with Oceans software, such as Grip Explorer. In short, how do I get the data, how do I use the data, and then a little bit about how I might interpret the data. Today's podcast will talk a little bit about our new thermocline and fish map tools, which use WeatherNet's thermocline grib data. From time to time during the podcast, I'll use the TC abbreviation when I'm talking about the thermocline grib or the thermocline tool, and the GE abbreviation when I'm referring to Grib Explorer 9. WeatherNet 5, which is our, our new release of WeatherNet in March, provides global access now to subsurface temperatures down to a depth of 1,000 meters. These are individual layers that you can download one by one or as a set, however you might prefer, by selecting the layer or layers of interest to you. The Thermocline product we've added as well takes and combines all of these layers into one file. So you get a complete picture of the subsurface ocean conditions around you in that one download. The picture is possible because in Grib Explorer, which we, uh, we've just released Grib Explorer 9 also in March, we've now added a new thermocline tool that looks through these layers of the thermocline grib to give you a two-dimensional picture of how temperature is changing at depth at the location of your cursor, or in other words, where you might consider fishing. The thermocline tool shows you the depth of the mixed layer in the ocean as it displays how temperature changes as depth deepens. We add to this a tool uh, which ties the preferred temperature ranges of 40 different fish species to the thermocline analysis and then relates that to the depth of the ocean at which those preferred temperatures occur. To top it off, we then create a fish map showing you how across this whole area, this whole grid of ocean that you're considering fishing in, how does the preferred temperature volume under the surface, the subsurface layers, change as you move around this grid? In short, it identifies areas where the opportunities to find your target species should be highest because the temperatures they like are the greatest under the surface of the ocean. So that's the short story. Let's go back again and show you how to find and use the new thermocline data and the tools within Grib Explorer. Moving back to WeatherNet and closing out this screen. So we're back on the main screen of the portal mode. The thermocline Grib is available from this portal mode, from our basic mode, as well as from library mode. I'll click to move to basic mode by sliding over here on the bottom. In basic mode, it can be found in several of what we call our basic mode fish or personalities. Um, it's available in the Europe fishing personality. Here's the button for that. It's available in the Gulf Stream personality on page two. Here's the button for thermocline there. And it's available in the Tuna Atlantic and the Tuna Pacific personality. Notice in each of these personalities that there are other types of fishing data available from these, um, from these presentations, including here in, in the Pacific personality, the, the temperatures at the 150 meter depth contour for today, tomorrow, or two days into the future. Let's move now to library mode. I'll click on library down here. 
The thermal climb product in library mode is found in the grib fishing folder within the C temperature subfolder and then probably logically in the subsurface C temp folder. I can just move to the fish map thermocline and highlight it and drag it over into any working batch that I have in the library mode. Drag it over there and drop it. Let's move back now to basic mode and the Tuna Pacific personality. I'll click on the thermocline product and add it to to my set of waiting products to download. Then I'll move into the map area where right now you see I've boxed a region around the Hawaiian Islands. If I don't like that region, I can I can zoom out. I can change my map view to really move to any other location in the world and draw a box for that location. But I'm going to stick with Hawaii. So let's move back over here, draw a box. To ch change my box and actually put a new box in place, I move my cursor to the upper left corner of where I want that new box to be and then drag down and to the right. When the box is the size that I want, I just let go. And that frames now this new area of interest to me. But here's an important point. If you're, if you're downloading the thermocline grib at home or at the office or at the dock on a Wi-Fi connection, don't worry about the size of that grib. The block can be as big or as little as you want because you have such high bandwidth. But if you get offshore and you're not on a broadband device offshore, maybe on a slower bandwidth uh, Iridium handheld or, or Inmarsat handheld or Global Star, try to keep that box size to about five by five. That's five degrees of latitude by five degrees of longitude. Um, the thermocline is a big file because we're looking at a lot of layers of data. We compress the heck out of it, but still be aware of that when you move offshore. Once I've got my target region the way I want it, I, I click over on the download button and then I would hit the go button here on the file transfer screen to actually go out and grab the data. Whether it reaches out, dials through your phone or connects through your Wi-Fi connection, retrieves the grip from our servers, brings it back, terminates the connection, and then launches Grib Explorer 9 to automatically view the grib and provide you with access to the new thermal climb and fish map tools. Let's do that manually over here just to keep things clean. The, the TC Grib product is only now supported on version 9 and higher of Grib Explorer. Of course, in Grib Explorer 9 and higher, now we've got the TC thermocline tool and fish map tools are only available in there as well. So if you need to upgrade from what you have now to version nine, please give us here at Oceans a call or even better talk to your local dealer to get you, to get you the upgrade. A few things I wanna point out once that grib has loaded into Grib Explorer. One is up here in the upper right is a, a little icon called depth. This shows you all of the depth layers that are present in this grib that you've just downloaded. If water depths go deep enough, it'll show you all the way to 1,000 meters. Here we're going down to 500 meters. And you just click on and select the layer you're interested in looking. Notice how when I do that, there's a subtle shift. If temperature's at 30 meters, not a lot of difference. Let's go deeper. Let's go to 150 meters. Notice how we're seeing a big change in temperatures down there. Lots more yellows and, and reds. Now let's go to 250 meters, down to blues and greens. So we've really dropped in temperature as we get into those lower depths. 
Another area to pay attention to is on the right hand side of my screen. This might appear on the left hand of your screen, just depends on how you set up your Grib Explorer. Um, it just gives you information about the cursor point. Um, but the plot options area down here, if you click on that, that's the place to go if you want to change how your data appears. Notice here I would go here to, to select uh, Fahrenheit if I want Celsius or vice versa. Um, how I'm displaying the data, do I want contour lines and so forth. So that plot options section can be, can be real handy. And then lastly, up here in the upper left, right next to the 3D, the real easy to see 3D icon, is our new thermal client tool. I pop that on, and let's start by just kind of driving around in it to show you what it's made of. Um, the basic features, of course, are this box, this grid, showing you um, temperature at depth. On the left side of the grid, we have depths measured in meters. On the right side, we see depths measured in feet. Across the top is the range of temperatures that we see in any one or more of the layers of the thermal Klein grid you just downloaded. Um, Below the grid, if I move back into the map, you'll see a lot in the lawn and then a bearing and range. So a lot in the lawn, probably obvious to you, is where my cursor is. The bearing and range is the bearing and range from either where I've set my home location manually in uh, Grib Explorer, and here you'll see it's up here north of the islands. Uh, or if you've got a GPS feeding data into WeatherNet, or into, I'm sorry, Grib Explorer, it will it will relate the bearing and range numbers there to that that gps feed i've moved into the into the grid that i've downloaded and uh, some some very obvious features inside of the tc box now first of all it's it's the thermal line that's what this is all about that red line that drops from the surface to the depth that's your thermal line Looking at it closely, you can see that it depicts how temperature changes as you move deeper into the ocean. In some cases, you'll see that temperature, that thermal climb graph, it will, it will drop pretty much straight down for tens, if not hundreds of meters. Here, this, in this spot here, I'm not gonna move my cursor because it's a great example. Um, we see it temperature basically unchanging until just shy of what maybe you know between 60 and 80 meters into the ocean um, then that graph will break sharply to the left to the viewer's left and that degree of that sharpness varies a lot as you see as we move around the ocean. The area above this shelf, this break in temperature, is called the mixed layer. As water in this region easily mixes with itself because of its similar physical properties. But that sharp break in temperature creates something of a wall between these warmer mixed layers above and the colder stratified layers below. It's a hugely important feature for thermometric species like tuna and billfish. These species can then move between the zone below it, which they prefer by their, because that's just how their bodies work. The physical processes in their bodies work better at those cooler temperatures. And the zone above it, where their prey species often are located for similar reasons. Those warmer waters are better tuned to those prey species. Knowing where this mixed layer lies and how the preferred temperatures of the species relates to that zone can provide another important factor contributing to fishing success. We've added a couple things to help boost 
that analysis or boost the insight into that analysis. Look to the left here of this TC grid. You'll see a, a menu which says fish species. <laughs> We've here organized 40 different species of fish in this list. If we, we move from species to species, we can see <coughs> excuse me, how that range changes by species. Because with each of these species, we've identified the, perf the temperatures which that species tends to prefer. That's embodied in this vertical column of colors, colors which correspond to the ranges in the scale above. Watch as I move from species to species. Let's pick white marlin. Let's pick, well, jack. Let's pick, doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to show you how that column of preferred temperature changes from species to species. We're going to call this shaded column the optimum temperature column, or the fish OT. Keep an eye on that now as we work through a couple of the other steps. If we move our cursor back into the grid, you see a third feature. So we have thermocline first, then we have this preferred temperature range for the species you're interested in, that's the column. And then as soon as I move into the graph, I see this horizontal green bar extend from the thermocline all the way to the left axis where I see depth in meters. We call this the optimum temperature at depth. The upper edge of this bar is equal to the maximum temperature preference of the species that you're targeting, or that you've identified in your, your pull down over there. And it's positioned to show you where this temperature occurs in the ocean. The, similarly, the lower edge of the OTD bar represents the minimum temperature for your target species and the depth at which that minimum temperature is located. It's, it is too annotated with the depth in meters or feet that you're working at. In short, this horizontal bar shows you the depths at which the optimum temperatures for, which, for your species exist in the ocean around you. Perhaps though, you don't agree with the preferred temperature ranges we may have assigned to one or more species. No problem. Um, undoubtedly, you know better than we. So what we allow you to do is just click on the edit button once you've identified a species and then simply go in and change the lower and upper temperature values to the values that you think are co correct. Just click save when you're done with that and, uh, and you're all set. Uh, if you decide, well, I want to go back to what was there at the beginning of the program start, just, just click on the default button and it will restore the, um, the temperatures that were there at the beginning. Or, or maybe you're looking at the list here and you, you don't see a particular species that you wish were there. Well. We've identified or given you three kind of generic options down here at the bottom of the list, other species one, two, and three, which you can just click on and bring those up with the edit button and specify the temperature ranges assigned to them. Lastly, on this, on this edit screen is what we call your maximum fishing depth. So even though the thermocline graph may show a lot of water at the preferred temperatures for a target or for a given location in the ocean, what if those temperatures are too deep 
for you to use with your gear. They really mean nothing. There may be great temperatures down there, but you can't reach them. So in terms of its relevance to your fishing success, it's more or less nil. So you see this white line that cuts across the, uh, the fishing graph or the thermocline graph. This is, a graph, this is a line we call our maximum fishing depth for your boat or your gear. And you can adjust that depth in the edit tool by just changing the number that you see assigned there and pressing save. See how that line moved up? Now whereas the lower and the upper temperature values in the edit screens usually always do, they always apply to only the species you've identified, this maximum fishing depth setting applies across all of your species. I'll close this out. I'll go back and let's select yellowfin again. And I'm going out to put out the fourth interesting feature in this graph. And that's this kind of triangle shaped section. It's hard for me to, sh can't really show it to you and have my cursor that in the grid where you can see it. But it's that area that runs from the thermal cline over to the left edge of that optimum temperature column for your species. It's, it becomes a, a darker or denser green section. It looks more or less like a triangle. This is triangle represents the available fishing volume, temperature of your preferred species at, across all depths that are reachable by your gear for your target species at this location. In general, the bigger this triangle, the more opportunity to find your target at this location. And it's important to only pay attention to the portion of the fishing volume triangle, which is above that max fishing depth line for your gear, as I was mentioning earlier. If we move our cursor around this downloaded thermocline file, you're going to see how the, the thermocline and the fishable volume triangle change with location. Again, bigger triangles mean there is more water at this location which is at temperatures that match your target species' preferred temperatures. Smaller, te smaller triangles mean there is less such water. Other factors being equal, opportunities for successful fishing outcomes should increase as the size of the fishable volume triangle increases. Of course, those other factors are other data that might be available in WeatherNet, like sea surface height, like ocean currents, salinity, and so forth. So that's real nice. By moving my cursor around, I can inspect my fishing area and assess accessible fishing volume piece by piece. What if you then had a means of assessing fishing volume and fishing opportunities across the whole field of those temperatures around you? A means of integrating not only across the ocean, but also looking vertically into it. And that summarize this in one nice color-coded picture highlighting how the fishing volume for your target and your boat or gear changes in that ocean. Well, we've done that. That's the fishing map tool you'll see here. If I click on the fishing map button, I'm now presented this graph depicting the same area of the ocean that you've been looking at with your background grib, but now looking at it from the perspective of fishing volumes. So even though those colors there, those colors in the fish map don't relate to temperature, they relate to fishing volume. 
for example, and I think, of course, that will change by species to species. So let's go and let's do big eye. Let's do blue Mormon. Let's do skipjack. Let's do white Mormon. The point being that you now have a holistic way of viewing in that map areas where the fish that you're targeting have the best chance of occurring. So I'm just going to move it up here. Again, even though the color, they're color coded, these are not temperatures. The colors are fishing volumes. In one step, Grib Explorer has swept through your background grib at all of its depth levels, calculated the fishing volume triangle for each of them, and adjusted it for your maximum fishing depth. It then color codes the volumes it came up with and plotted them as the fishing map, shading them from colder blues, where you have very low volumes, to warmer yellows and reds, where your fishing volumes increase. This is represented in your, this color-coded column to the left. Fishing values around 280, it would be bright red. Fishing values at zero are in, in, in blue, meaning the blue areas have very few temperatures. Above, what did we set? 400 feet was our, uh, was our fishing depth. So there's very few temperatures at depth for big eye tuna that lie up above 400 feet that are south of Hawaii right now. Let's change that depth. Let's change this now to 500. See how that changes? Let's change it back to another species. So that changes. So it's integrating both the temperatures that are at depth with the temperatures preferred by your target species and the ability of your boat or gear to target that species at those depths. All three factors are integrated into this fishing map, map and then presented in one fell swoop. You can see this another way by moving your cursor around here in the map. Look above the map to that scale. That scale, this green, dense green, extends from the surface down to your, your maximum fishing depth, in this case measured in, in, uh, in uh, meters. The, as you move the green around, or move the, the cursor around, you'll see that green bar changing, giving you kind of another visual feedback on how your fishing volume might be changing. Let's move into this blue, see how it drops down here. So we move in there. So it gives you in, in, a, in a pretty cool little picture, the volume, your fishing volume value, as well as the depth where that volume is occurring. Although it's probably easier to use that off of the, the thermocline for the cursor as well. Now it's important to remember, don't, don't worry about what that absolute value of the fishing volume might be, whether it's 124, see there in, the, in that green bar above the map, or whether it's 97 here. You know, it, those numbers by themselves don't mean a lot. What they, what's important is their relative size compared to the other regions. So you got 32 here as opposed to 94 there as opposed to 152 there. So you have, you have higher chances of finding temperatures matching 
your target species here than you do in the other areas. You have a better opportunity, all else being equal, to find your target species in this yellow area because there are more temperatures in this area that match its preferences. Of course, as a fisherman, you're going to be integrating that knowledge with what you know about currents, about sea surface height, about all the other factors that you take into play. This is just one more tool, this thermocline, this fishing map, this subsurface look is just one more tool to add to that chest of tools. But it's a brand new tool. It's a tool that really has never been available to offer these kind of insights um, this quickly and this analytically to you before. Um, I want to also point out just a couple of nuances. Let's move my cursor back into the main grib that we downloaded. As I move that around, notice how my, my cursor in the fishing map mimics that location. So, of course, we can drag this fishing map, make that map smaller, adjust its size, move it back into the grib, and it gives you just a little bit more interactivity. So there we have it. We have the new thermocline grib data from WeatherNet. We have the subsurface temperature layers in WeatherNet from which that thermocline product is derived. We have that available in WeatherNet 5, released in early March of 2017. And that data feeds into Grib Explorer 9 that was also released in March where you will find the new thermocline tool and fish map tool. Thank you. Uh, we're very excited about the new releases, about these new data, about these new tools, and we'd love to hear your feedback on them and, and how you're using them. That's it for now. The next podcast will uh, we'll cover the use of our horizontal profiling tool and our 3D tools for, uh, for fishing purposes. So until then, thank you very much. Bye now.